Hello and welcome back to Elliot's podcast. This week, I don't think I'll be playing any music. That could always change when I get around to the edit, but I, I really highly doubt that. I was away earlier in the week, so uh, it's it's been a bit of work to to just get back to equilibrium, but I am happy to be doing my podcast, so that is great, and... I have some topics on my sticky note that we'll, we'll go over today. So a lot of this is, you know, in context to me playing music and staying staying with it and staying with everything I, I'm, I'm looking to do. Oh, that was, I don't know if you heard that. The dishwasher just finished, which is good because it was kind of rumbling in the background. Yeah, so the context of these topics is, yeah, I I work towards having a healthy relationship with my creative work and I always like to to see how that that carries over to other other areas of my life and I always hope that you can can benefit from from some of the things that I work through and and what I've learned so the first topic is what I call rich thought, poor thought, because there used to be a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, or there is a book, very popular financial wellness book. And I sort of realized, um, you know, some t- point this year that that there are thoughts that that make you poor in terms of your quality of life. And then there are thoughts thoughts that make your life rich and so the um and it probably does trickle down to to actual financially wealth or or not but that's not really the point of the of this this tidbit it's that 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 you have to watch when you when you enter into a pattern of of negative thinking and or or holding on to something that is not really helping and i think that in this this period in time um it's very easy to to latch on to to negativity and it's something that i you know i pay attention to this because it's just a a, a challenging time is is a great time for for renewing certain ways of of thinking and and it's a challenging time is is probably only time when growth can happen because when it's everything's great you kind of get complacent and comfortable and then when things are not so great, you're you're called upon, which is part of the the hero's journey. Is you, you get called. They there's this thing in in the Hebrew world where they they call you to the bima, which is um, you get called to read from the Torah. And I love that expression because you kind of get when when things are turning around, and it, it happened really quickly with. I remember inflation stories um, six to eight months ago. There was a story about the the founder of Arizona iced tea, and they were famous for having like a price on the can. And he, there was a story about how he won't change that price even with inflation, because um, he stands by like kind of the little guy. It was sort of that story, but. I don't know if they still have stuck by that. I was just in the States last week and uh, prices for lunch were like, lunch alone were like really high. And I was explained to me that, well, because I was in, I was in Colorado, which is where a lot of people want to go. Like a lot of people, I think, left stuffy cities and they wanted to be, be in these kind of smaller towns out you know kind of fitness towns i call them (laughs) and and so the prices were like really high and my point about all this is that inflation and 
uh, changes in the economy they they were ready to happen for like a long time and then they kind of just whoop they 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 set into into place so that's just one potential area but it it creates stress a lot like in a way that's very in people people send stress around to each other and they and it's it be, when you enter into a challenging time it's a lot of stuff comes up and in the pandemic itself was very similar to in terms of um, the first year was was challenging financially for for many people and then it was but more so it was socially challenging and so there was all there was a, a similar um, effect of of being thrown into a, a difficult situation and so I, I've kind of, I think when you combine a lot of these different factors and that it's been, it's been a bumpy ride, um, I would say that I think you might want to think about my idea of, of rich thought and poor thought and start to know when you have a poor, poor thought that's come up. And, and you, as I said, it's, it's usually a pattern and it's a loop of thoughts. It's like a if you know much about music, there's these things called tape loops, which were um, the original looper machines. You could make a tape loop by um, recording something onto a tape, like even on a cassette tape, and you could cut the the tape and glue it together, and then the ta- the cassette will play a loop, and that's what happens once you get onto one get onto a juicy negative pattern it's it's a loop that that plays a lot and you need to learn how to take that tape out and not necessarily throw it away but but like look at it and say i'm looking at this this tape that's been playing and that's that's code for consciousness because consciousness is awareness that you are now aware of of what's happening but a lot of people are not aware they 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 go into a haze and then they and then they go go on like rampages and self-destruction um missions and they're just not aware and it's um the the act of sort of growing up is is coming to awareness that this is not helping and that you're going to to work on this. And the 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 poor thought is is uh, difficult also for a health perspective, which is that stress. Sorry, it's hard for me to get comfortable in this situation. Uh, like I have a chair and I talk to the camera, and it it seems to be the the best of most of my setups that I have here. Um, but the, the, what was I saying that? Yeah. The impact of, of a poor thought is really stress, which is going to kill you with, um, cortisol and uh, cortisol flooding the body and not sleeping well and, you know, all these types of things. And then you get into self-destructive behavior such as, as overeating. And and I always remember the stories of, of women who joke that they like to sit on the couch and eat Ben and Jerry's when they're not feeling well. And I, I totally, I totally get that. Um, but the, yeah. And, and the, 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 the thing about the, the poor thought is, is that it happens. It'll always come up. Um, like I, I sometimes joke like that if I wasn't worrying about one thing, you know, there's another thing that's going to take over that, that sense of worry. And it, it is sort of the byproduct of, of the way we're, we are and the way our, our minds are shaped is it it usually does have some kind of crisis to, to worry about, but, um, yeah, I just thought it might be helpful for you to to know like um 
is is one thought adding to my life, making it more fulfilling, tapping into what it means to be alive, and is it doing the opposite, which is not making me alive at all. And and as I said, stress and all that is is killing you. Uh, some stress is good, but but a lot of it uh, you probably know for yourself is is not helping. Another uh, linked idea to this that I I sometimes tap into lately is the thought of the that everything is in its perfect form and in its perfect way, and I know this is very hard for the rational brain to to wrap its its head around um but it's it is quite motivating and i say the rational brain because someone might say well how can you say that you know all the injustice in the world and everything that's happening to, around the world is is fair and everything is is in its how can you say everything is in its perfect form when a planet is like literally melting and that's not really what what i mean by this i like that's you can't take what i'm saying and then and then start laying layering on things that that are not in your immediate sphere this is really related to being in your in your immediate sphere and and so you you have to take everything that's in your life and you have to take responsibility for it. And that's what I mean by everything is in its perfect its perfect space. If if you created I created um the situations that we we find ourselves in and that's very empowering to say that it it's happened for good reasons and I own it and I take ownership of this and a lot of people do not do that they think everything's unfair that they're entitled to more more things that um, why does this person get to prance around on Instagram and look popular and meanwhile no one likes me uh, why does that person have a sports car um, Everything is in its is perfect way, and it's it's um you know if, if if I were to 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 make it like personal or something, I would say that like for me everything is a byproduct of work that I I've done and haven't done, and so I'm 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 quite proud of of a lot of the things I've been able to accomplish for starters like this, this podcast has been great uh, feat that I'm able to show up and, and do this. And I, I've, it's very hard for me to miss, miss an episode. Now it, it's a way of life for me, even though it, it can be quite, quite challenging to sit down and, and do it. Um, but if there is things that I'm not happy with or I'm disappointed with how some things have turned out in other ways, like let's say I had a went on a, a, a tangent where I decided that I wasn't, my music career was not <laughs> at the place where, where I think it should be for, for my age. And I'm not, I, I don't go there very often. Um, but if I, if I went, if I was um, inspired enough to to go on such a rampage, um, I would. I think the the best way to handle it is to really say that it it, it is fair. It is it is the way, and that that is that that is both. I think Stoic philosophy and also Taoist philosophy to just accept that this is this is the, the the I keep repeating it the way cuz I was that is Taoism does definitely um talk about the way and and what what it what it enables you to do is like 
when you start to, to think this way is you don't you don't fixate on on some grandiose idea of, of a music career that never materialized. You you sit you 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 sit with it, you live it, and you start to simply love it. And um it is quite a phenomenon that people they yearn for something and then when they have it they they're disappointed and that's why you can't uh, live your life in this way where it's like complete uh dissatisfaction with with the way <laughs> the present moment the present unfolding of the cards and continually living in some other life that does not exist so I, I will leave you on, on that one to sort of um, numerate or <laughs> meditate on that, on that idea so that you're not always in some other, other state of mind that's dragging you down. And so when, let's say you are learning an instrument or something and you're kind of discouraged about your, your your progress, you you take a step back and you sort of just say, you know, this is how it's meant to be right now. If you're not getting it in some some form, um, then you have to you have to start to tackle it in a, di- a different form. And I've done that a few times. I've made various uh, pivots in in playing in music and that sort of thing, so that I I work with what I have and that I'm that I can be, so I can show up to the instrument and be be happy with it. And and one of the big areas is is the keyboard more than it is the guitar. The keyboard has been more of a frustration for me in terms of playing ability, but I'm actually there is many qualities of, of my playing that are good keyboard. And, and I've learned to just sit in the grooves that I, that I can do and, and accept that, accept a lot of these weaknesses. So uh, speaking of playing music, so I was re-listening to the power of habit by Charles Duhigg and I'm listening to the audiobook. So it's um, less than halfway through it, I think. But I I picked this this title because I think when I first heard that book, I, I actually read read it when I first had it, and I I real I remembered enjoying it, but I was not into I didn't build an identity around creative habits like I do now, and that I I post different creative habits and the the interesting thing about this book that I will share with you and how how you can find some some uh, benefits from this this book is the idea of the cue and the reward and this this is very interesting because it 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 does have a tangent with some kind of spiritual um, new thought uh, process which i'm referring to is is early law of attraction writings you know someone like neville goddard uh, neville goddard and charles hanel i don't know how to pronounce his name um, but these are people who, who you would have heard expressions from them similar to the feeling is the secret. So the, the secret to attracting what you want. And for my, epi- for my podcast, the, the sphere that I keep it in is what I call creative wealth. I don't, I don't preach about how to attain uh, financial wealth or romantic wealth, <laughs> but so creative wealth is is the area that I I, I stay in, um, in terms of like uh, generating 
um, lots of ideas and, and being free to, to work on, on your medium of choice. And, um, so the, so the early, these, these earlier thinkers would have said that the feeling is the secret, which would mean that tap into the feeling of what you, what, you, what makes you alive and and work with that as as a way of propelling you you forward and so in this book the the, the power of habit um, the author Duhigg uh, recounts different I'd say there are a lot of advertising examples um, of people of, of methodologies that that exemplify how a habit is created and and one of the most famous ones is the invention of toothpaste which i think they were saying that it was not it's not as needed as we think but we grew up with toothpaste it's it's become part of m- most people's habit that they need it in order to feel like their mouth is clean. But I think other generations before the, the toothpaste might have, maybe they just used the toothbrush. I don't know what, I don't know how it all evolved. But the early advertising of the toothpaste was, was that it, it, it played up on this, this gap, which was that if you feel like your teeth are, getting dirty that was the cue and then you use the brush your teeth with the toothpaste and then the reward is these clean feeling teeth and then the part of that was because of the foaming foaming and the tingling and the sensations and so you're kind of tapping into uh, uh, a, a known problem and then you are creating a solution to it and that's that's i think how a lot of uh, corporate cp consumer packaged goods and that sort of thing a lot of companies they are they they tap into this idea and you can tap into it as well for your own purposes and you can hijack all the learnings from these things for something that you might be more interested in and so that i would say like when when i'm able to play a bit of music and practice music get better at music devote time to music then i feel a lot better. I I don't feel very well when I'm not. I go through phases of what what you call writer's block, and I talk about this 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 gap. I talk about it a lot on this podcast because it's my most interesting work that I I think I do is that it's in this area. Is that, and it's similar for people. If you can't relate to to it through music, if you think about the process of exercise and like what happens when you, you, you go through a funk where you, you don't do any exercise and then you, you're not just, you don't just come back to it. Like you're really into it and you're like, there's huge transformations happening. Your body is like fit and, and in that, in that kind of um, trickles down to, to other areas. For me, it's, it's, it's similar with the music thing and, Oftentimes the brain, the mind can, can make a bigger deal out of all this than it really needs to. And I would say the cue and reward system for this is it's a little harder to do. And I'll tell you why these are harder. It's harder to be, to make it more tangible because the, well, the cue would be like when you walk in the door um, from work or when you uh, wake up and you finished let you finished a cup of coffee okay um, the 
then that's the cue to go over to your instrument and start playing. And then and then the reward is that you now feel amazing. But you this also could be that you actually reward yourself. That's um that's another layer of this. It's it's not just that you felt great but that you you gave yourself a scoop of ice cream. <laughs> And that's how you would you would build the habit is you would re, you would offer yourself a reward, very similar to how we operate uh, training training puppies is is something of this sort. Now whether or not this is for you is <laughs> is up to you. I don't prescribe I don't prescribe this type of thing f- for everyone, but it is it is an option to t- to take advantage of. And, and it's building on a lot of innovation in terms of persuading people and, and creating collective habits. As I said, toothpaste, like, uh, the, the book also talks about Febreze. Febreze was a poor selling product when it first came out, but they were, they were targeting the wrong people. They thought that people who just were smelt bad um, would, uh, would like Febreze. There was a story about a lady who dealt with skunks for, as part of like park control, uh, animal control. And, and they thought she was the perfect, um, uh, uh, customer and it actually worked for her. And, but then they thought there would be like, okay, if the skunk lady likes Febreze, then maybe the smoker likes Febreze. But actually a lot of people who are submersed in, in, bad smells they don't necessarily know that so so they they had to tap into another market that was by the way i have said tap into a lot but i like that phrase tapping into things um but they 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 hooked onto a, this market of sort of moms who i think i i don't i just remember febreze commercials often yeah, they the moms who have teenage boys who they can smell them, <laughs> and then they realize that the Febreze, um, the habit that they could build on, was the cue was that if you're cleaning up the house, that you could spray this on the extra at the end as some extra item, and the reward was is that you had a fresh smelling home. So because sometimes cleaning up you don't necessarily have that full reward of of the fresh smelling home but febreze actually delivers that that reward and that's how febreze could become and became part of the habits of of certain demographics and and it it that saved the product cuz the sales rate of it were was was so low that it was it was going to tank so yeah, that's what I would. Um, that's what I. One area that I, I recommend you think about is like, what are the, what is the cue that that you will build the habit around, and then you will, um, you can kind of experiment with, like, was the re- was the was the reward itself worth it? And so, so an intrinsic reward could be like that you just in, um, were satisfied with, with how things were progressing in terms of, of your progress in, in music and, or art or whatever you're doing or in fitness. And then on top of it, there is the idea of, of the, um, the extrinsic reward, which would be like, um, are people more into this thing? Uh, like, uh, like for example, one of the benefits of one of the rewards for me, like playing a lot of music and taking it more seriously, is that if I sit down to play on camera, and I can, I can share what I'm doing, and it's not about showing off; it's about sharing. It, music and all art is a form of a gift. 
and it it is a gift to to show up and play that music and if yours if if in an extrinsic reward is that people might um, really enjoy and resonate with what what you do and it's not just about a like button it's about creating connections with people and in adding meaning to your your life through this this work and um that's where this really takes on a new a new thing is that you build the habit of playing music and recording and and trying to enjoy doing this <laughs> and you ta- and you tap into the good vibes of what happens when you play and and having a great session and then and then you see how that radiates further and and how it Im- improves your life or you know it for some people it it detracts from their life that if you take up a, a sport or a thing and it's not working out it's quite frustrating and one of those is classic one is golf it, it is many years of frustrating experiences <laughs> and hitting golf balls into into forests and sometimes not even hitting the ball at all while people are watching you and it's very tough learning curve but then when it when you pass that learning curve and the ball goes flying away it's quite amazing experience and it does take on this mix of both intrinsic where it's like great feeling the the club hit it perfectly and then extrinsic where there's like people saying hey good shot <laughs> And so that's kind of where, where that's sort of a healthy creative habit, I would say. I would say an unhealthy creative habit is, is like, why don't people like me? Why am I alone? Why am I a loner in this? And, and, and really destructive as we go back to the earlier part of this, this show, uh, the poor thoughts that come up. And so the one way that I'm working on helping design these habits is I I have a new thing, an experiment and a beta test, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do a separate video for it and on my YouTube channel. But I do really want to start getting the word out about it, which is what I call clock in. I have not checked if other people use this phrase or whatever. But it, it seems to work for me for now. And uh, Clock In is at the moment a Discord channel on my my Discord, which I'll put a link to. It's so uh, as you, a lot of people are not familiar with Discord in my age group, but it's very much like Slack. It's a chat server. I think it's amazing, brilliant uh, service. And you can have little channels that are devoted to different things so i've started a discord in the past few weeks to test out one and one of them is called fortune cookie which is kind of sort of motivational i guess little messages that help people i love the idea of of what happened the the magic of opening a fortune cookie or for my situation that some of the teas that i drink the the label has some kind of nice message on it i i just love that stuff so there's Fortune Cookie, there's Creative Habits, which kind of reposts some of my creative habits that I post on my website. And then Clock In is a new one, which is, it's about, um, what's Teddy doing? Um, clock In is, is, the idea is that you will say what you're, say what you're trying to do, not bark. Come here. Um, when you're going to do it, and what what mechanisms you will use for for doing it, and this is a good way of initiating a habit. You don't have to do this all the time, but it's it's really useful if you've been in a long funk, or let's say you went away on a trip and then you're back and you it's taken a few days to even have any sense of normalcy. Um, another example would be in the boring world would be like. Uh, freelance work 
something that you, you're doing extra outside or side hustle, you're doing it outside of your work and you're kind of tired from your, your work and you, you still need to do this stuff, which you really do have energy for. Um, and I'm not talking about um, trying to drain people to be over burnt out, but like there's usually a bit of quite a bit of energy like ready to go that we don't really, we don't make use of because we we're afraid And so that's why, you know, for me, I like to drink tea and coffee and write in my journal. And and I do that kind kind of, some of it is is healthy, but some of it is a form of fear. And other people watch a ton of of TV and movies, which I totally respect because the great, so much great entertainment. I mean, I watched episode one of Squid Game last week. I thought that was really, really captivating uh, media. I don't blame anyone for, for watching all this stuff, but clock in is a way to help if you don't want to do that and you want to do this <laughs> and so the all you have to do is is you post in the in the discord and then it's a form of like I'll read it and I can acknowledge it and then once it, once someone's read it like I mean you're on <laughs> way more way more um, accountable than writing it in your your journal that you're going to do this thing on that time and that day which is actually a good step too if you if you don't want to par- participate in my idea um being able to just write it down for yourself and and you know maybe sign like a fake contract that you will at 8 p.m. on Tuesday night you will spend an hour playing music that's a good start um but i i didn't experiment just one time with my discord channel and I, I did a clock in and I wrote down what I would do when I would do it. And then I paired it with, with another tool, which is called focus mate, which is a service where you go on and you work with other people in on video. It pairs you with a stranger and that one, I mean, I've tried a few, there is another one called cave day, which um, I don't, I don't like as much because it was um, the schedule was different. There's a lot of these different flow clubs. There's a lot of them um, circling around now, but the focus mate is the best because I could even go on in 15 minutes on a focus mate for the purposes of editing my podcast. I could, and then there'd be another person there and I have to spend the next either 30 minutes or hour doing it. So if you combine that with what I'm working on, which is clock in, um, and you just punch in what you're going to do, and then um, it might be helpful to when you are going to do the thing, you can clock in this on the thread that you've made, and you can reply to yourself and say, "I'm here to do this." Um, you can also just reply after to say you did it and how it went, and that's what I'm trying to build is some kind of community around um, helping people show up because I think that's 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 all with GI Joe they said knowing is half the battle well for me half the battle is turning on my instruments so in that example I just held down the power button on my keyboard and the you can see the keyboard is booting up it's and um, then I would turn on the keyboard above it. I would turn on the mixer. I turn on the other mixer next to me, turn on the speakers if I want to hear things. But the, um, like that, that is how you show up is that you, you turn things on, you, you pick up your instrument and, and, and you put it in your lap and you, and you pull out a, a, a chair that, that you can sit in or, or you can even stand up. This is a nice guitar because it's, it's light lighter. If you get a light guitar, you can stand up and play it. The, the, those are the key moments. This, the, uh, if you're a writer, <laughs> your pen and your paper sitting in a chair, opening the notebook or, or typing. There's tools that I speak about for typing. One is called flow, flow state. Flow state is a writing 
tool for Mac and iPad and you and on I have the iPad version and you can um hook up the keyboard to it and and you save 10 minutes and you will then um you have to keep writing um and if you stop writing it it deletes what you've written so it makes you write for 10 minutes um that's the type of tool like let's say I was writing a book I would I would probably be really into that tool because that would create vomit drafts and force you to write your book. (laughs) Um, There's no real equivalent yet for music. And that would be amazing if you, if there's a tool that like you have to keep playing (laughs) and if you, if you, if you stop playing, it erases everything you, you, you've done in your, your jam. Um, But the, the point of all this is that showing up is, that, that like that, that turning on that keyboard well then i just have to hit a note and then i hit a few notes and then i i'm uh, if you want you could put on a backing track i i saw um a video with trey anastasio f- from fish he's made some videos teaching what he knows he's trying to give back i mean i guess it was more during the pan height of the pandemic and he he talks about how he puts on some music in the morning and he plays along with it and rips it. And in that case the of the video, he was showing two Afro beat tracks because I think they, they get him into a groove and they get him moving. So, so you want to get moving and get things going. That's what showing up does. But when you're in, in stasis and you're not moving and you're tired from, from work and you're, you're thinking about the news cycle, you're not going to do much. So that's what, what the clocking in is, is meant for. So I will put that link into my discord and you can ask me any questions about that. Um, and as I said, I'll make a separate video for that on, on my YouTube channel. But, um, my name is Elliot Feinberg and that's my YouTube channel. And this is Elliot's podcast. So yeah, it looks like there will be no, no music this week, which is fine. I think there is a lot of good stuff in here, but do let me know uh, what you think about this stuff and if it resonates with you. And I wish you a great week. Thank you so much for listening. Take care now.